that is the bridge cracker. Welcome to the lab. Most of my videos are ham radio related, but I do teach a bit of technology and I felt that the focus of this channel has been mostly ham radio. It's the thing that I'm passionate about, but I also uh, work in the field of education and I've been doing an engineering degree that might be on the back burner a little bit at the moment. I've gotten through two years of engineering and at our school, we have kids doing the bridge building competition, the Oricon bridge building competition. And uh, if you need to know more about that, link below and you'll be able to look at uh, the documentation for that and whatnot. And later in the video, I'll tell you a bit more about that as well. This episode is going to be all about, if you're a teacher that's been asked to run this program, bridge building, etc., and you need to build yourself a jig, something that can test bridges. Now, obviously most schools have access to timber work equipment and whatnot, or hopefully they do. And if you have access to those simple tools, you'll be able to build this uh, jig. This is not a, a total plan of how to do it. It's to give you ideas as to how you could design an effective jig. I'll show you the actual jig. I'll talk about its construction, where I got the bits and pieces for it. And I will also uh, demonstrate it in operation and you'll be able to see how it all works. Quite a simple thing. If you've got the tools you need, you can probably throw it together in an afternoon without too, too many headaches. Let's uh, get on with it. In today's episode of The Art of Engineering, we are going to show you my Bridge Crusher version 2.0. Now at the school I work at, we have a festival where kids are, festival of the creative spirit, where kids are doing various activities. And one of the activities is a dry run at the Oricon Bridge Competition. So if you don't know what the Oricon Bridge Competition is, Google it. And you'll see that uh, it's run most years. I don't think it's running this year because of uh, COVID concerns and whatnot, but it will be on next year, I'm certain. And they're a civil engineering company and they are into civil construction of bridges and roads and whatnot. And they encourage kids to investigate the properties of bridges and structures by building a balsa wood bridge, which is then tested to see who can get the bridge that carries the most weight. Everyone has the same kit. Now in previous years, the kids um, played with the rules a little bit. Uh, said you could use everything from the kit and of course the kids used the tube that the kit came in and the bridge records were like 300 kilograms um, these days they don't let you use the tube uh, you have to use just the balsa wood and the string that's provided and the records are back down in the 30s and 40s rather than the 300s but um, this jig here with the scale that's provided will go up to 35 kilograms um, because of the construction, I'm certain it could go higher than that, um, but you would need to change the scale. Now, a little bit about the things that are in this uh, structure. We have our scale that's down here, you can just see in frame. That's a luggage scale that I got from Big W in Sydney. Office work sells it as well, it's around 20 something bucks. Uh, the magpies are trying to kill each other in the backyard. All of this other stuff that I've got here came from Bunnings um, to make the uh, to make the part of the jig that goes over the bridge that the scale is attached to. I got some flat bar aluminium um, and I cut that and uh, drilled and used screws from Bunnings and I got a bit of this 10 mil uh, rod, threaded rod, also from Bunnings and that's how I made this uh, part of the structure. All of the information about the testing requirements of the bridges are in the paperwork on the Oricon site PDF so I will um, put an attachment below showing you where to go for that PDF if you're a teacher and you want to play with this uh, project with your students. It's a fun project and I think it's a very valuable engineering project. When we did it we were lucky enough to have one of the Oricon engineers come to the school, look at the kids bridges, give them some pointers on structures and whatnot and it was just a very fun day. All the timber bunnings as well. Um, I'll just show you the uh, profile. Uh, this is the stuff I've used. It's probably over-engineered, but you know, better safe than sorry. It isn't structural um, pine, so it's a little bit cheaper. It was probably the cheapest pine that money could buy, and uh, I should have, you know, sandpapered it and whatnot, but pretty much left it rough and just painted it uh, jet black. Hides a multitude of sins. All the materials, apart from the uh, the scale, came from Bunnings. Oh yeah, the um ratchet here like I said previously it's just a ratchet used for um, tying down things on um, roof racks it's good for I think it's over a hundred kilos 
this should set you in good stead for most of the bridges that kids construct. If you're a TAS teacher, you teach STEM or engineering studies, please stick around to the end. I just want to talk to you about some of the other resources that uh, you might find useful on my channel. Now, for the sake of ease of storage, I've bought, I've made it using these bolts here. They are the cheapest gal bolts that I could buy rather than using stainless steel. And ideally you'd put a washer underneath this as well because the timber's quite soft and over time that, that nut is gonna eat into the timber. But hey, improvements can happen later. I try to drill this, the holes for these bolts in the same spot so that when you disassemble it, it will go back together easily and remain reasonably uh, flat. You know, obviously it's not engineered to the highest precision. So what I've done is I've put letters here that go together and which is the top and uh, which is the bottom. So if you put the A's and the A's together and the B's and the B's together and the top goes on and the bottom goes on. So the tops are just a rectangular frame and I've used the orange here to indicate the area that the bridge must remain inside. They've got a certain amount, uh, low battery warning always, we've got a certain amount of overlap on the structure that you're allowed to have and then the span, all in the Oricon document that I've, uh, that I've given you. But the kids can actually come up to this and use it as a template for their bridge. If they're not um, into numbers and they just wanna do it organically, they can bring their bridge up and place it across the gap and make sure that it makes it across the gap. And they can also, use this to work out whether their bridge is going to fit inside the uh, the actual testing apparatus. Although I do advocate making a separate little timber jig that they can slide into their bridge and make sure that everything works. Now the Oricon one actually has flat bar here that's 50 mil across. So if you wanted to be 100% precise about um, this particular piece of equipment, this is not quite to spec, but it's close enough for my uh, purposes. And uh, yeah, so rectangular frame the top and a rectangular frame on the bottom and then these two side pieces here as you can see when you slide your rectangle on it comes up to this piece of timber which is across the sides and so this slides on it can't slide further down because it's hitting this stop on the sides so you've got two sides that come out and then two rectangles so not tiny to store but certainly smaller than leaving it in its current state so there you have it, load tested to maximum 35 kilograms and uh, holding fast. So all is good. One very hungry magpie begging for more cheese. I don't even know if cheese is good for magpies, so. And maybe that's its baby. Oh, we were just faking being an amputee. This is the Bridge Crusher version 2.0 commissioning test. And as you can see, simple non-construction plywood and we have here a luggage scale up to 35 kilograms and your standard ratchet for a, a, a roof rack tie down <laughs> safety first Wait. And I probably scored that piece of timber a little bit too much. We got ourselves up to 10 kilos and we've got this rope here to stop this thing from swinging and falling and smashing into the scale. The scale's made out of plastic, fantastic. But as you can see, it survives the, uh, the test. So that is the Bridge Crusher version 2.0. This has been a Mr. Komlinos production. So after that design test, it's pretty obvious, the last time I did this too, is a second rope here, so that when the uh, bridge breaks, and at the moment it's still attached, so it can't, it'll come up further than that if we um, unattach the, uh, the bottom there. But uh, as the bridge breaks, it falls, but it doesn't swing out towards the operator and smash him in the face. But uh, like I said, you still need to wear safety glasses because when the bridges splinter, even though it's balsa wood, you can still cop some splinters in the face as the things go off and uh, that can still cause damage. So safety first. 
Thank you so much for sticking around right to the end. Now I'm an engineering studies teacher or I have been an engineering studies teacher and on this channel in the engineering studies playlist you'll find a huge amount of resources for that subject um, that you can avail yourself of or, or use uh, to help your students. There is also a link below to a Mr. C Robotics site which I set up when I was running some programs for after school robotics as well. So please take a look at all of that. There is also some more basic stuff for junior technologies as well. So look at the different playlists, have a look around the, uh, the YouTube channel. And if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you hopefully in the next video.